Well, hey there, everyone. My name's Brittany, and we have a lot coming up in the next couple of weeks. So sit back, relax, and let us fill you in on what's happening here at CRC. Join us this Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. for a short, encouraging word. Crossroads Church is throwing a junior-senior prom. There will be music, treats, and a good time had by all. Tickets are $5, and all proceeds will go to the Body of Christ Community Clinic in Belton. We are allowing each junior or senior to invite two guests, but we only have 100 spots available, so sign up today. For more information and to sign up, go to www.crcbelton.com prom. Kids' summer camps are still being planned and held as normal for a 5 to 12 year old. However, the deposit cost to reserve a spot and to lock in a price for the 8 to 12 year old camp has been reduced from $100 to $50. For more information, head to the Kids Camp tab on our website or you can email Pastor Cameron. And speaking of our Crossroads kids, every Sunday, Pastor Cameron and Emily have been releasing an online kids' church service for your little ones. We still want to reach our students during this time of change, so head on over to facebook.com slash crcbelton to view the lesson. Well, thank you for partnering with us in building the kingdom of God. Please head on over to crcbelton.com slash donate to give online, or you can text 77977 with the amount you want to give, a space followed by CRC Belton. The Lord is honored where we choose obedience and bring our tithes into the storehouse. Well, if you've accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior recently, please let us know. Send us a private message or comment below so we can celebrate with you. Now, get ready to hear the Word of God this morning. Good morning, Crossroads family. Thank you for tuning in this morning and hanging out with us. Be sure to like and share this video right now. Someone in your friends list needs to hear what the Word of God has to say to the church this morning. So be sure to like and share it right now. Host a watch party. Man, let's make this go viral all over the internet today. I want to say thank you to everyone who's been supporting us online uh, and, and via giving a, a, their tithe, uh, you know, virtually. You know, we have a, a staff still to pay insurance, utility bills, uh, a lot of things just like you are doing as well. And you've been so faithful. So, again, thank you uh, for, for supporting us, supporting our missionaries because we're still supporting them. And, and thank you for just being a part of the vision. And because of your giving, we've been able to feed people, help people out. Uh, doing some incredible things. So thank you for that. Um, you've been making this all possible. And I know it's been in the announcement video, but I do want to say again, man, on March the 29th from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., we are hosting our very first Crossroads Prom. That's right. There's going to be food, a live DJ. There's going to be dancing, incredible lighting rig. It's going to be a lot of fun. And what's more is we're going to be giving away a limo ride to one guy and one girl and they're plus twos. The limo's going to come to your house, going to pick you and your friends up. It, you, so put on those prom dresses, get those tucks and those suits out, and, and let's get ready to have a good time uh, and uh, come to Crossroads. Bring your friends. We're going to give you an amazing prom. I promise you, red carpet, incredible photo booth, photo wall. You're gonna, we're going to have a lot of fun, and we want you to come out. And, so this is open to anyone in Bell County, whether it's you know Temple, Belton, Troy, Salado, Academy, Holland, and all the ones in between, Central Texas Christian School. Man, we just want all of our kids... Uh, we want to give them a prom but listen we only have 100 spots available so you got to go to our website and sign up right away because those spots are going quick and we love you so much so thanks for allowing us to bless you and your children during this time in that way now without further ado i'm in, i'm introducing one of my friends his name is will jones i had originally had him plan to fly in and speak live in person but with all this corona nonsense that's just not possible but we're going to get him in the building soon, as soon as we can. But today he's delivering the word of God. He's preaching to you. So tune out all the distractions. You know, don't worry about what's happening in the kitchen. You know, really treat this like you were in church this morning, okay? And uh, grab your Bibles, get the family around the TV, around your digital device, and let's get ready to celebrate what God is doing. And so welcome my friend Will Jones today. Will, I love you, man. Thank you for carving out time to bless Crossroads today. Man, we love you so much. And uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy what God has for you today. 
Hey, Crossroads, my name is Will Jones, and I am so excited to be with you this Sunday via online. Listen, wherever you're watching from, in your car, your bedroom, your living room, cooking in the kitchen, maybe you're out on the bike, your playground, whatever it would be, share this with somebody. Invite people to a watch party. Let's get people to church to hear about Jesus. Hey, I just want to send you a shout out because I've been hearing of your faithfulness and your generosity in this season to reach out and meet tangible needs in your community. Kudos to you all. Kudos to you all. That is the way that the church should be modeled in this season, but not just this season, throughout this age. So keep up the good work. Keep being a model. Keep being a great sport. Crossroads. Love you and appreciate you. Also, Pastor Matt Thrasher, man, you guys have a wonderful leader. I'm so thankful for my friend and just our relationship and uh, can't wait to get to Belton, Texas to be with you live one day. But I'm thankful that we can have the opportunity to do it via online. Well, hey, today uh, I want to share God's word and I'm going to just introduce myself to those of you who don't know me. My name is Will Jones and I'm an evangelist and I'm based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I lead an organization called AMI, which stands for Awakening Ministries International. And basically we get the chance to equip the church and reach the loss. I love it. That's what we do. We reach the loss and we equip the church to do likewise. And so we get to do that through services like this traveling, preaching, inspiring believers like yourself, calling people to Jesus, helping the vision of the church to continue to reach out in their community. And we get to go internationally several times a year to take mission teams all around the world in some of the most unreached places. And we bring partner churches like yours to help us go together to reach people, plant the church and raise up more disciples in the world around us. And so I love what we get a chance to do here at AMI. Our team is so blessed. We have members throughout Latin America and Africa and even here based in the U.S. And so it's a joy to be able to join you today via online and share God's word. So thank you for having me cross words. I'm so pumped to get into this word today. So let's join together and get into the Bible, the best book in the world. Come on, somebody. The B-I-B-L-E, the book that is right for me and you. Let's read from John 15 today. And I still got my Bible in case you're wondering. You might have your phone or tablet, whatever you've got. Let's go to the word and dive in. John chapter 15, verse 1 through 8. I am the true vine, Jesus says, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away and every branch that bears fruit. He prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. That is like a drop the mic moment right there. Jesus just unleashes the bomb and lets you and I know that we can't do nothing. I'm going to say it like I'm from the South. We can't do nothing. Come on, somebody. We can do nothing without Jesus. He lets us know that like a branch that abides in the vine. We have to abide in him in order to bear fruit. And I love this. Listen to what he says. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. So he tells us if we want to be fruitful, we have to abide in him. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that in just a moment. And then he goes on to say, if you abide in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. He reminds us again without Christ in our life, we can do nothing without being connected to him. We can do nothing. So I want you to remember that today because a lot of us are trying to do so many things. We're trying to produce so many results in our life, but we're finding ourselves failing or being burned out because we're not really abiding in Jesus. We're disconnected from the vine and we're not being as fruitful as he would like us to be. Some of us think that we're in charge of bearing our own fruit. Some of us think that we're in charge of, of, of producing 
the things in our life that we want to see. I want to remind you, Jesus lets us know it's about being connected to him. And listen to what he says in verse six. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them, throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. This is a revolutionary scripture that will revolutionize your prayer life. I'm telling you, it changed my prayer life. And I'm going to explain to you how here in just a moment. But he concludes verse eight with verse eight in chapter 15. And he says this by this, my father is glorified that you may bear much fruit by this. My father is glorified that you may bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. I love that, my friends. Let me unpack a few things for you today in John chapter 15. If I were to title this message, it would be called fruit bearers, fruit bearers. God wants you to bear fruit and he wants you to bear fruit, not just temporal. He wants you to bear fruit that's eternal. He wants you to bear fruit that lasts, fruit that remains. And this is what Jesus says in the scripture. And he lets us know that he is divine. He is the source from which the branches draw their resource from the nutrients to survive, the nutrients to live. You've seen it before. You've looked at a tree when you saw a branch that was dead. But some of the other branches that were alive and fruitful. How could that be? It looks like they're both connected to the same vine. Well, Jesus lets us know here there's two branches, one that bears fruit, one that's fruitless. Which branch will you be? Will you be a branch that's connected to the vine, which is Jesus Christ, that bears fruit in your life? Or will you be a branch that seems like you're connected and be fruitless? Unfortunately, in our churches, we have a lot of people that seemed like they are connected to the vine, but instead they're being fruitless. They're not bearing much fruit in their life. And what Jesus was talking about here, he was setting his disciples up to get ready to go on mission because he was soon to be crucified. He was soon to go to the cross. He was soon to experience death and he would no longer be with them. And he was letting them know that they have to understand this key ingredient to be fruitful on the mission that he was assigning them to. It's the same for you and I. We are on mission every day. It doesn't matter if you're in the secular world. It doesn't matter if you're in vocational ministry. You are called to be fruitful. You are called to advance the kingdom. That's why he told the disciples, be salt and light, be a city on a hill, be, 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 be a voice, a beacon of light to people, be witnesses by sharing the love of Jesus Christ with your voice and your life. That's what we're called to do. Advance the kingdom and be fruitful. And so I want you to take a moment and think about your own life. Are you bearing fruit in this season of your life? Are you reaching people for Christ? Are you making disciples of Jesus Christ? You see, a lot of times we find ourselves getting churched. What do I mean by that? We come to church, we give in the church, we participate in church. But church is not the kingdom of heaven. The church should be a local expression of the kingdom of heaven, which grows so many parables. Jesus talked about the stories about what the kingdom of heaven was compared to. And it always dealt with growing. Jesus wants to grow the kingdom of heaven through you. And therefore, he wants to grow you. And if he's going to grow you, you have to be connected to the source that gives you growth, which is himself. That's why he said, I am the vine. You are the branches. You can do nothing if you're not connected to me. And many of you, unfortunately, you're trying to do many things, but it's not happening. Have you ever thought about why? Maybe it's because you're not connected to the true vine, Jesus Christ. And so I want to help you get connected if you're feeling like you're not connected today. Maybe you're here and you once were connected, but you've gotten disconnected a little bit. Something's happened and you want to get connected back to Jesus Christ and get in the vine so that you can begin to bear fruit and be fruitful and have fruit that remains and fruit that lasts. I want to help you do that today. And listen, Jesus also wants to help you. This is what he says. He says this. If anyone abides in me. And I in him. 
he's going to bear much fruit. But if anyone doesn't abide in me, he won't bear fruit. Bottom line. And so you have to figure out where you are. Man, has your life been fruitful? Have you been reaching people for Christ? Have you been making disciples? Have you been have you been growing together in your small group? Have you been attending church? Have you been reading the word? Have you been connected to Jesus? That's what he's talking about. This word abide means to remain. And he's saying, I want you to remain in me. I want you to stay connected to me. I don't want you to leave me. I want you to be intertwined with me. And that's what Jesus is letting them know. He says, if you're connected to me, man, you're going to be fruitful. But if you're disconnected from me, you won't bear fruit at all. You're going to do nothing. And some of you, you've been doing something, but in essence, you haven't been doing nothing. I found myself doing that a bunch. I'm working, I'm pressing, I'm striding, I'm trying to do all I can do for God, but I recognize it's not God doing it through me, it's me doing it on my own. And then I would have to go back and say, God, forgive me, I've been trying to produce, I've been trying to make things happen that you're not in because I'm not connected to you. Maybe you're there today. I want to encourage you, let's rethink this thing because Jesus says something so pivotal. He says, Whoever bears fruit, he's going to prune you to bear much more fruit. Now, what in the world does prune mean? Some of you may be gardeners. It's Texas, so you've got great weather all the time. Well, I was talking to one gardener, and he talked about the pruning process. And it was really paradoxical to me because I'm like, that branch was very fruitful. Why would you cut it off? It doesn't make sense. And what he said was, that's the very reason why I cut it off. I cut it right at an angle of something that they call the suit within the branch. And you have to cut it right at the suit, right up into it, and then let the branch begin to grow out again over time as you cultivate that. And once it does grow out, it's going to bear even more fruit. Well, that's exactly what Jesus was saying. He was pruning, the, the gardener was pruning the branch because it was very fruitful and he wanted more fruit from it. But the branches that weren't producing any fruit, snap, cut them up, burned them. And I said, oh, my gosh, that's exactly what Jesus was talking about in John 15. He wants you and I, those that are bearing fruit, and he wants that for all of us. He wants you and I to be producing for his kingdom in whatever context that he's called you to live in. He wants you to be bearing fruit. Now, I want you to remember that word bear, B-E-A-R. It's not like the grizzly bear, but bear meaning to produce in this context. Jesus lets us know that it's really not up to us to produce fruit. He produces it through us, but he only produces it through us once we're connected to him. And so, my friends, some of you are not connected. I want you to get connected and I'm going to show you how you can do that. You're asking, man, Will, how do I abide? How do I be a fruit bearer? How do I begin to allow God to bear more fruit through me? Well, one way is you got to be connected. The other way is allow him to prune you and go through the process. But I want to give you some practical ways as to how you can abide. Number one, I want you to remember we got to get in the word. Remember, Jesus said this. and We're going to close out with this passage. I think it's in verse seven. Got to get in the word. The word of God is your source for living. Listen, if you want to know Jesus, you got to know him through his word. If you want to grow in Jesus, you got to grow through him in his word. He is the word of life. The Bible tells us that in John one, that Jesus is the living word. And if we want to know him, we got to know him through his word. And so you got to get in your word. Read a Bible plan this year. Don't start with the full year. Start with the 30 day one. Start with the 90 day one. Whatever you can do to get in the word. Set a time. Get a place. Start to get in the word. The other thing is prayer. Prayer is our our hotline to God. It's our connection to God. It's how we commune with him through prayer. We talk to him and he talks back to us through his word and through the Holy Spirit that lives within us as believers. So you got to get in prayer. You got to get in the word of God. And then you got to stay in community with other believers. Listen, in this season of COVID-19, it's easy to get disconnected. 
Don't get connected, my friends. Stay connected. Get in your small group. Start a small group. Get on Facebook Live and do a virtual small group. Get on Zoom. Go to meeting. Whatever platform you need to start a small group and stay connected. And lastly, watch the services. Get online. Watch those services that Pastor Matt and the team are putting out. Get to church. When the doors open again and we're able to re-entry, get to church. These are ways you can abide. Getting in the word, praying, staying in community, getting to church, whether that be online and or in person when that happens again. So Jesus lets us know how we can revolutionize our prayer life. Check this out. In verse seven, he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will. Oh, my gosh. Crossroads Church. I am getting excited over this because this revolutionized my prayer life. Basically, what Jesus is saying here, if you are abiding in me and my word is also in you, you can ask what you will because we're in alignment. You're going to ask things based on my heart. That's what Jesus is saying. You're going to ask things based on what I think and what I know to be true and what I would love to ask my father for. That's what he's saying. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will, because he understands that you're praying in his name and in the way he would pray to his father. That's unbelievable. I love it because it helps us to understand when we pray. Pray the word when we pray, get a specific promise of Jesus in the Bible and put that with your prayer request and believe God for it and trust him for it. Listen, this will revolutionize your prayer life. Abide in him. Get in his word and let his word be in you and begin to ask him to advance his kingdom through your life. My friends, that alone is the solution that we can have to begin to bear fruit. Jesus lets us know. And he says this based upon your prayers. What he said, you ask and you will have it based upon your prayers. This is what he's saying. The father will be glorified by this. Oh, my goodness. Crossroads. That just should bless your socks off. The father will be glorified in the fruit that he produces through you because you're connected to the vine. That's good news, my friends. And so some of you today, you're watching this and you have been disconnected from the vine. You're disconnected because either you've been trying to do things on your own or you've been living on your own and not connected to the vine. So some of you are in that place that you're not connected to Jesus at all. Some of you have been connected to Jesus, but you've been doing your own thing. I want to give you two appeals. Number one, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, get connected, get back into the word, get back into prayer, get in the community, begin to get back into the, the, the church and watch the services online, pray together, get participate in the service when the doors open again, get connected to the vine. If you're not connected to Jesus Christ and you don't have a relationship, listen, I want to help you understand that you're doing things in your life right now that more than likely is not fruitful. And you may think they're fruitful, but what Jesus means by fruitful is that it lasts eternally. He wants to give you an abundant life here now on earth. And you need to make a decision. Are you going to be fruitful or fruitless? Jesus wants you to be fruitful and you need to give your life to him. My friends, I want to let you know that he has something specific for you. He has a purpose and a plan for you. And he died on the cross, rose from the grave. To give you new life. Jesus Christ took your sins that separate you from God. He took your sins that has caused you to be distant from God. And he paid the price for your sins so that you and I could have a relationship. You know, he lived the life we never could have lived. He died a death. We should have died so that you and I could have a relationship with God. He took our place. And today, all you need to do is like ABC. A, admit that you're disconnected from God because of your sin. B, believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin and took your place. C, confess your sin to him and trust in him. Ask him to lead your life and to be first in your life so that you can begin to be fruitful. So if that's you and you're watching online, wherever you are, you could be watching Facebook. You could be watching Instagram. You could be watching YouTube and you're watching this. I'm talking to you. If you want to get connected to Jesus for the first time in your life, 
Pray with me. A simple prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, today I admit that I'm separated from you. My sin has caused distance. But I believe that Jesus Christ has paid the price for my sin and he built a bridge to allow you and I to be connected. Will you forgive me of my sin? I confess them to you right now. Forgive me and come into my life. I make you Lord of my life, Jesus. And I commit to follow you. My friends, I just led you in a prayer and you can pray something of that sort, but you have to mean it in your heart. You have to confess it with your mouth and ask Jesus into your life. And so take a moment to pray that prayer. Take a moment right now to pray that prayer. And as you're praying it, the Bible says you are receiving new life in Jesus Christ. And so I want to let you know if you've made that decision and you've prayed to accept Jesus and commit your life to him. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome, my friend. New life is on the horizon for you. And God's going to begin to make you fruitful as you continue to abide and follow him. Crossroads Church, I love what you're doing. I'm thankful for you as a church family. Continue to be salt and light in your community. Hey, I want you to join AMI by doing two things. One, we really need your prayer. Will you commit to pray for us? We're doing things all over the world and we need prayer warriors like you. If you join our prayer team, we're going to send you a bi-monthly updated report on how you could be praying for us. If you'd like to join that team, what I'd love for you to do in this moment is just text PRAY2020 to the number 76959. PRAY2020 to the number 76959. And there you'll get a response back. Fill out that form and we'll keep you updated with how you can pray for us when we're traveling, when I'm on the road, when our team's going through spiritual warfare. Because we need people like you praying for us as we're on the front lines to advance the gospel in really difficult territories. So will you commit to pray for us? Number two, will you partner with us? We need generous churches like you to partner with us financially to send us to reach people with the gospel. You can partner by sending a special gift or you can partner by being a monthly partner. I want you to know that it's people like you that allow us to do what we're called to do, to go and carry the gospel around the world. And so if you would like to partner with us, this is what I want you to do right now. I want you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what would you prompt me to give to support AMI? in the work of the gospel. Take a moment to ask the Holy Spirit what he would do through you to help us continue to go reach people with the gospel. And as you respond in obedience, you can text the number 76959 in the letters that you would text is AMI. It'll be right there on your screen. Text AMI to 76959 to partner with us financially. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for allowing us to partner together to take the gospel to the world. I so am blessed because of people like you, my team. We keep going and we're encouraged because of people like you and churches like Crossroads. So thanks so much for praying with us and partnering with us financially. Crossroads, I love you. God bless you. Keep up the great work in this season, my friends. For those of you that gave your life to Jesus, There's going to be someone that reaches out to you from crossroads to help you follow Jesus and take the next steps. Listen, I want you to know today you made the best decision of your life. God bless you, my friends, and I look forward to seeing you soon one day in person. Love you and God bless.